Welcome at the stream of Chaos, Chaos Zone, which is basically a group of CCC groups in the east of Germany. Um, it's a talk by Korrektiv and Clemens Komerell. No filter for the right, no filter for the right wing. Uh, this talk will be translated live uh, in your streams. Just choose the welcome everyone. And then also, the that is coming talk. right now. Um, zurück zu Deutsch. Have fun. Um, enjoy the talk. talk. No filter for the right wing, for the right, for right wing people. By Korrektiv. Have fun. Das Bild wirkt wie ein typ the picture is like a common Insta post. A white baby, a blonde white baby, a wooden sword, a little bit of decoration. The warm light looks um, good. This 669 people like it. Who looks at it whenever you're looking at it more closely, it means something different for them. This is a little pig child that will be responsible for, that will be ready for spring attacks. The wooden the wooden circle is supposed to be a black sun. So this is a small child next to a neo-Nazi motif. And welcome to the bad side of the platform. This is what we wanted to look at. So even after short, short research, we knew that this post is only one of many. If, if when you're white, there's no upgrade. Don't mix. So there's a, this is a world that really doesn't really attract us, and we really have a disgust when we're looking at this. We, that's a five people team from five reporters, Alice Echtermann, Till, Arne, Celsia, and me, Clemens, who, were, who was responsible for the data analysis. And then there's uh, all of the corrective team. M me, myself, this is my first data journalism project, and I'm really happy to be here representing the team to show you all our research, no filter for the right. This, the, this next 40 minutes is about um, Instagram and the right-wing data. This is about how they are using Instagram. And it's also a report of how we took this data set of four and a half million Instagram users and how we researched it. Why Instagram? It's one of the most common apps currently. Uh, on a first look, it looks really, really plain and not really dangerous. It looks like nature photo, photos, travel blogs and stuff. There's more than 20 million people on there, German people, and half of them are young people. So there's a lot of um, young people when they're, when they're looking for their identity and they really are touching with the right scene. And the number and the size of right and right extreme contents is larger than I expected. At least I personally thought though thought so. I personally had never been in touch with right-wing right -wing data, right-wing um, content on Instagram instead of Twitter where it, it is more across bubbles. Within Instagram there's only, you, you only stay within your own bubble. Uh, so I, I've showed you some, uh, we have some examples um, here like, um, twi like users, like politicians and 
Even some posts that really look um, not very dangerous, there's some subtle, there's subtleties. This picture, for example, is from Lisa Lehmann, who looks at um, who's in the young alternative, the young alternative party, which is a right-wing party in Germany, and this looks kind of not dangerous. Um, a young person drinking her coffee, and the but the script says taking a break with um, coffee that is by someone. So it basically says, well, Germany is still occupied by uh, allied powers. Other hashtags like photo, picture, winter show that um, even when you're looking for not for harmless hashtags, you will find this picture. This is only one example of many. This, these examples are enough to show to be able to map the network of the new right-wing party. We knew that we needed many much data for this, and this is what we want to start with. That's why we're first looking at what data you can actually get from your Instagram profile. In my opinion, that's four parts. First of all is like um, metadata and common profile information. So that's basically names, and for all of the posts, that this person has made there's data on like how many likes how many comments when was it published and then there's hashtags and some of the posts also have um, subtitles basically the second part is connection data so who follows this account and who does this account follow? Um, the, th the third thing is text data. So like um, the subtitles, the description, what's on the picture, stuff like this. And the fourth is like um, subjective data. So qualitative data. What does this what does this picture look like to me? What emotion does it convey? This helps to um, understand all of the other data. What is missing in this is are the stories. These are only these are only uh, available for 24 hours, so we weren't able to look at them. But there's still lots and lots of data that we do have. So we've set up a database to basically save all of the data. This allowed us to also save changes in the data. But we also needed is a sampling method because we need we wanted to trust our sampling. We couldn't just take some accounts random. Instead, what we did is um, exponential discriminative snowboard sampling. It sounds very fancy, but it is actually quite easy. We assume that each Instagram account follows other accounts, and then we follow these accounts. And then we follow these accounts, and so on and so forth. In theory, we would get to a huge sample very quickly, because we know since this year how exponential growth works, exactly like the coronavirus. So we needed to basically stop at specific points. We basically just filtered some of these branches and we'll look at how exactly we did that. But first, we need origin accounts from which to start. So for that, we created a fake account. We basically made it look like a right-wing account, like it was part of the scene. So it would allow us to be in the scene. Within this, to select our origin accounts, we basically started following parties. So they are, so because all of these party people are paid by com public money, so we thought it was very good to look at them. And then we looked at additional some accounts within the identity movement in Germany that the um, constitutional that the constitution has basically considered we need to watch them and then we looked at we made sure that at least a second person within our team also looked at this account overall we had 281 origin accounts in there most of these accounts came directly from afd which is the german right-wing party in parliament so obviously it's not exactly a perfect sample there's a good chance that we missed some other groups in parallel to these original 
trading accounts, we also included a control group that basically includes um, VIPs and influencers and some accounts from our environment. We wanted to also find some content that isn't only found within these right-wing bubbles. So let's look at what we did. First of all, we looked at all the connections from 281 accounts. We looked at those following those that these origin accounts were following. Overall, it was 85,000 profiles, and many of them were only followed by one person. So we chose to use a criterion. We so we needed, in order to stay in the sample, an account needed to be followed by at least three of our origin accounts. And that was a couple, uh, that was 4,532 accounts, and then we followed additional accounts, and then we had 800,000 accounts, so then we had a second criterion. We wanted to account, we wanted to keep accounts that were important for our origin accounts, so every origin account, every account became one point, became points for um, different connections. We basically gave them different points. And, and to stay in the sample, you needed to have a specific number of points. This number seems random and basically chosen by us, and it is. But we needed to basically balance having a sample size that we can work with and having enough coverage. And this seemed to be the best um, compromise. So we had 10,805 accounts overall. More than a third was private and we couldn't use it. And in a th the third step, we basically categorized these accounts into important or not important. N not only, we didn't only categorize into important or not important, but we also categorized into categories. We basically had a training using some of the using a subsample. Um, chose choosing these um, categories, and then we categorized all of them in order to easily make categories accessible. We basically allow. We basically made a an online interface, and every member of the team could basically look at the profile and then choose the category that it should go into. And in addition to that, there was this. There was the possibility of adding some comments. This is very interesting, or part of the identity movement. You could also skip accounts if you couldn't find anything, or give it to some other team member. Any account that we thought would be a control group or a or not very interested, so we actually changed the weighting in our database, and then they basically um, chose they basically fell out of our sample, even though we didn't look at them specifically. Overall, we had more than 100 coding sessions with a lot of um, interactions. Overall, we spent 120 hours on Instagram profiles of the right scene. Because we got a feeling for the activities and um, their preferences of this scene, which we didn't know before. Um, six and a half thousand accounts were categorized. There were over eight and a half thousand uh, relevant accounts, and we have uh, found four and a half thousand to be relevant. Some of them became ir irrelevant because they, because the network changed and the dynamism um, removed some of their criteria. There were a bunch of accounts that we didn't categorize, three and a half thousand, because they were private, and then uh, the dynamism uh, caused us to miss some of them. All of these were close to the two and a half points that we were assigning. And this this final uh, set sample of four and a half thousand, we then went to fetch all relevant data um, to do our assessment. We have 4,501 Instagram accounts, including all information, profile, followers, um, posts, and so on. 
between those accounts. On the 1st of September 20, we, we finished, um, there were 330,000 uh, connections. And we have over 800,000 posts of those accounts. And finally, we have um, a category and a subcategory for each of the account. That's the second part of the presentation. Okay, now, now we will take uh, statistics on how those accounts were categorized, and then we, we look at uh, one piece of data uh, out of the metadata. Here's the um, split of those categories. The largest ones are uh, AFD and Patriots and uh, Conspiracy Theorists. When we, look, when we look back to the um, origin, where we came from, 80% um, uh, were AFD, so, so this is uh, very convincing. The subcultures is the next uh, big one, and that's uh, right musicians and uh, lifestyle merchandise with subcategories. Medium-sized categories are um, student uh, houses and so on, and alternative fraternities. Very, very small uh, amounts are what we call real right, uh, hard right wing uh, political parties and so on. And, and that was, uh, we categorized that as a separate group. Now, a, a large part of the AFD is context. They were somehow part of AFD, but they, they didn't have a political mandate. That's, and there's uh, party organizations, so maybe Europe, and, and some of them are fan accounts. Uh, and and they, they would be asking for somebody to become chancellor or something. Another large part is uh, the Patriots and conspiracy theorists. We were assigning them, uh, attributing them to the scene because they had emojis and flags and uh, topics uh, like uh, migration and, and uh, refugees, uh, corona uh, uh, deniers and so on. Young means uh, up to 20 years, 18 years. We have seen many profiles that, that talk about um, uh, clawing back the country. And uh, I wasn't aware of this and I didn't expect it before I started this. So, so these uh, these young people, uh, new German standard uh, NDS. And so they they um, identify themselves with this, um, and they follow people who who explain this. There's also uh, people who uh, idolize uh, history, uh, the uh, uh, Kaiser, and and uh, and the German Reich. Now we want to look at uh, metadata and, and what can be done with it. So here's the uh, the hour of the day and uh, the day of the week um, when those posts were appearing. There's the party organizations on the left hand side on on the y axis. There's the the day of uh, week and uh, and uh, across is the the hour of the day. The the lighter it is. Um, the, the more has been posted. So Monday through Friday, there's lots of posts, and, and they early uh, start early in the morning and um, sometime in the afternoon. But after 1800, um, it gets less. 
So, with the politicians, we find less at the beginning of the week, but we, we find it throughout the day and we find it also at night. So, this is uh, widely spread, because we expect, because uh, politicians have different preferences and, uh, and these accounts are covered by multiple uh, participants. Now here's the, here's the media scene. That's the media scene. So they uh, they emphasize the daytime. They, they start at 10 and uh, 11 in the morning. So during the media in, in the media um, area, they sleep in in the morning and they work later at night and and they work predominantly during the week. Now we're looking at the network connections on how the accounts interact in a network fashion. How, do, how does network data work? So it has nodes. That's the 4,500 accounts which we have taken. So we have uh, Beatrix von Storch, um, we have Jörg Meuthen and Alice Weidel. So the connections uh, show who's, who's following who, and only Alice is not uh, following uh, York. So this is a directed network. And a connection can be uh, unilateral or bilateral. You can see that the arrows have a different width, they have a different strength. And this, the stronger uh, the edge is, the, uh, the more important it is. So Mr. Meuthen is, uh, has a very strong connection to uh, Ms. Storch. So we think about how it is weighted. We've tried multiple things because there's no real rule. And we've thought about what, what can we actually use a criteria. We have normalized the data. So here's the things that we uh, use to weight the edges following each other. That's an expression of um, interest. So the, the amount of um, commonly followed accounts. So if you follow the, the same people, then you have um, similar interests and you, you, you belong to the same group. So if you use similar hashtags, um, you again share a topic. How often, how often do they comment each other's pictures and, and how much do they follow each other's pictures? These are factors for interaction. And the more frequently it happens, the, the more probable it is that they know each other. So for, for each pair of um, nodes, we have calculated one of those weights. So accounts with um, more commonalities are closer to each other than other ones. So with these weights, we have everything that we need. So here's the graphic that, uh, that is generated from that data. The closer they are, uh, the stronger the links, the closer they are to each other, and, and the further they are, the, the further they are apart. We are using the commonality class community detection algorithm. This algorithm tries to maximize the number of internal connections and minimize the number of external connections. So these are the clusters found by the algorithm, and we have found a, a good overlap. We could give them easy na uh, names easily. So being close to the network doesn't doesn't imply um, a hard closeness, but uh, but it suggests it. So accounts from AFD covers the whole left part, side of it. 
On the right hand side, you see identity, uh, identity politics and it's close to subcultures. So, if you want to look who is interested in what, then a, a different uh, representation is uh, more useful. So, here's each node one category. Also, diesmal wieder kategorisieren. The size is the, uh, represents the amount of the accounts in there. The strength of the connection is the number of uh, existing connections divided by the number of possible connections. And then you, uh, you weight it by the weight of the edges. So it uh, shows the interest of one group in the other one. So the, the color of these edges is um, who is being interested in order to keep it, in, uh, keep it intelligible. So AFD has a strong connection to the young alternative, but it, it is well explained in real world. And they also have an interesting connection to FPÖ. So the, the Junge Alternative is quite interested in AFD and they are strongly interested in Identitäre Bewegung. That one is interested in Junge Alternative, but, um, but strongly in subcultures. So with a full graphic, we don't only see who is interested in who, but we also see who is among the top four. All of them are connected to the media scene. It's surprising, but it's... It's a, it's a very interesting fact because we see that um, everybody is consuming um, con in content of the media scene. The media scene takes on the topics and, and redistributes it. And that's what you see here. We can't uh, only look at uh, the whole thing, but um, we can also look at individual accounts. Two uh, values are important, uh, eigenvectors and between the centrality. So the first one is um, somebody is as important as the um, accounts that they know. Between the centrality is the second one between the centrality is a measure of connectivity. What uh, how many are steps are on a uh, on the path between two accounts that aren't uh, connected directly? So they are how 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 are they in between other ones? So on the left hand side you find um, mostly AFD and um, Junge Freiheit. It, it, is, uh, it has a relationship to uh, reality. All of this is important in the Instagram network because they are being followed by many uh, accounts and, and by important accounts. More interesting is the other one, because there's uh, lesser known ones. So Dubrav Kommandisch is uh, the, the, the city council uh, Freiburg, and we haven't found that much, uh, and, and there's, another, another, there's the rapper prototype. And he has inspired the, uh, the NDS community. So now we're going to put this into context and, and that makes it interesting even more. So, so now we are finding the bridges between uh, those sets. All of, all of these uh, blue ones are AFD and the 
Und wir sehen in Grau alle Accounts, die mindestens... In Grau, wir sehen die, die folgen, die mindestens einen von beiden und eine uh, Connection. AFD ist blau, wie gesagt, und rot sind Accounts... Red sind die, die mit einer sehr hohen Konnektivität haben. Das heißt, in diesem Netzwerkausschnitt... Also, sie haben eine sehr hohe Betriebenheitszentralität. Und wir haben diese Namen bereits gesehen, die Namen in der Liste gesehen. Hier zum Beispiel aber hinzugekommen und sehr, sehr interessant. Hier sehen wir den Peripetie-Shop. Das ist ein Beispiel, wie Recherche und Daten zusammenkommen. Das ist, wo Recherche und Daten zusammenkommen. Peripetie ist ein Fashion-Shop. Patriotic Fashion. And the uh, the known uh, the known celebrities are uh, advertisers for that label. And he's uh, as as a politician, he's a a good fashion model. So this doesn't only show the. Um, so this doesn't only show, um, so this brand is really within both politicians and young AF dealer and young F and young identity people. So it can serve as a sign that we can't actually see from the outside, but they will recognize each other. And then I looked at which AFD politicians are interested in identity in the identity movement. And these are those that are red here. All politicians in red here follow at least three accounts of these identity movement. Of course, following doesn't mean that they agree, but it means having an interest. Especially, it's uh, these connections are especially interesting because the AfD said the AfD basically has an agreement that members of party cannot become um, part of the identity movement or of real right extremism. And we've asked Alice Weidel how they can follow these um, these followers. And she said, well, we can't say whether um, following these identity movement people against the, the agreement that we've made. So most of the most of them are local politicians, but some of them are actually within German states. Both of them are, um, for example, Daniel Freiherr von Lützow and Denis Hochloch. Especially Kaiser AfD is the most important account with, within this SAP network. Because it, and it's very interesting because we, ha we hadn't really considered it before, but it was, has been an important node, connection node within this. Now, let's look at this. Kaiser was um, a model for the NRW, which is a state in Germany. Um, campaign model for the AfD, and she's she actually wants to apply for a list mandate for the um, federal parliament in Germany. She follows many accounts in Germany, especially identity movement accounts, also from the initiative 1%. And she's, she also doesn't really agree to the agreement that they wouldn't follow these right-wing extremist um, parties. And she was also, she also modeled a uh, clothing from the shop that we talked about before. And we see that these connections that we see on the platform are also reflected in the reality. But what's interesting is that she deleted all of the posts, also those that we can see here. By now, she basically, there's a couple new posts, but, and she also, um, started following some new accounts. So being able to say that she um, she f she keeps her distance to right extremist positions is very is not possible. Lastly, we want to look at um, hashtags. Hashtags are important to look at um, themes in on Instagram because they are really interesting for 
uh, party for like um, the content. So um, here we see all of the hashtags that are really common within our sample, but not our control groups. And we have the number of accounts that use these hashtags. So like fraternity, Merkel has to go, um, let's elect AfD, fatherland, and these are often used from the IFD. But we also have these um, these hashtags from fraternities that are very common here. And it's quite interesting to us, but we can also understand because many um, people from this identity movement are actually part of these fraternities and many of these politicians were part of these fraternities. And there's a couple of um, part, there's a couple of hashtags text against um, left extremism or the Antifa. And if you look at it, you can have an idea of um, the themes of a specific part of our network. On the left side, we have the most common hashtags of the AFG, and you can see that they are really um, quite ego egoistical. There's lots of AFG, um, AFG, elect the AFG, choose AFG, um, AFG is important, stuff like this. There's lots of narratives that we often see with AFG. We are against the establishment. The only way for you to reclaim your country is with us. If it wouldn't be that bad, it would be quite boring, actually, because it's what we always hear. On the right hand side, we have the patriots and um, conspiracy theories. There's We have more of a focus on Germany, like Vaterland Preußen, which is a part of Germany and is um, often considered a um, an old part. And what's really important is that there's actually Defend Europe is quite it's quite present here, which is part of the identity movement and is basically against the EU and against the EU taking refugees as well. And we can also see that it's often about on history and on the German Empire. And then there's the hashtag NDS, which is against this group of NDS. And there's these right rap scene. But what you can also do with these hashtags is look at how often are they present together. Obviously, we could only look at some. So how many posts did the, were these hashtags together? In order to be shown here, it needed to be at least it needed to be relevant for 5% of the accounts. And then, and then we were able to filter it a little bit. And then we can see sort of like a thematic ma map of um, the themes of the right wing in Germany on Instagram. So we have in blue all of these different um, AFD type things, Merkel muss weg. Then on the left side of that, in the darker blue, we have stuff that is um, FPÖ, which is um, the Austrian equivalent to the AfD. And this is more about feeling home, um, keeping home, but the AFD, the German community uh, usually has the word fatherland, so they use different words apparently. And then there's a couple of English speaking ha hashtags and some within the, uh, within the identity movement that are pink or yellow. And there's a couple of, um, couple of classical Instagram hashtags like casual style and follow that are um, that are also here, but um, yeah, they're not as important. And the last big cluster is hashtag um, is related to the hashtag Vaterland, so Fatherland, and it's mostly related to fraternities. So we've seen a lot of it looking at data, but there's a lot of stuff that wasn't measurable that you can't count that where you can't have numbers. We asked people, we um, interviewed people, and these are also at least as important as the numbers. 
So something that we thought was quite interesting, um, because around the Black Tuesday, almost all of the left wing um, left wing parties basically used this black square, but then there was at the same time this white square, and there were a couple of conspiracy theories um, that there are only six percent white people on the world anymore, and these were um, parallel to the hashtag Black Lives Matter. They used the hashtag White Lives, White Lives Matter. There we have this classical idea that um, right-wing people have is we are we are being replaced and that's only one example of um, many and we have um, five stories that we've made um, that you can read on kein filter für rechts um, they show how important young women are for this movement they show how important some of these meme accounts are now let's get back to the beginning the this picture with the black sun was online for more than 11 months only when we told them only when we told instagram about it they they deleted it uh, according to instagram 350 people are uh, are responsible for deleting these um, extremist ideas and we want to ask them to basically follow these hashtags and to investigate these hashtags. Now, apparently, one of the hashtags that has been deleted for a while is still quite common in our data. Instagram also has told us to please um, tell them more accounts, to please send more accounts to them. Now, working filters against right wing really look different. It's important to actually report the these accounts and these pictures and we need a lot better media literacy we need to go into the schools what are codes of this scene what are the, what do these apparently harmless hashtags actually look like what do they, these really mean now i'm i can only say thank you for listening thank you for being here i would recommend that you read these um paper that, that you read these stories on kein filter für rechts I'm happy to ask them to reply to questions. You can also tweet at me at Klecom. Thank you for listening. Yeah, thank you. Danke. Thank you, Danke. Clemens, Clemens für den for this nice talk. And we have this possibility of asking some questions because Clemens is here live on the stage and there's a couple of questions how do you define the right connotation of a symbol is there an overview how do you define that okay nice good evening the symbol is it's a good question we have a lot of different emojis we have collected them like um the ger old german flag that um it's like an emoji for the Reichskrieg flag. So different emoji combinations and some combinations of animals like um, boars. And with a little bit of research, you can actually um, find them and understand them, even though you don't actually have them at the beginning. Uh, okay. A next question that might be a follow up actually. Do you have, did you find a new aesthetic, so to speak? So is there a right wing aesthetic of Instagram that is different from how Instagram usually looks? I wouldn't say so, no. I would say the dangerous thing is more that it's really, really similar to really classical Instagram um, accounts. It could be on every mainstream Instagram timelines the, there are normal hashtags are used and then they add some additional scene specific hashtags of course there's some meme sites that are very very close to these um, AFD look there's some of them they are really um, common in the community another question also from the internet from the software that you are using 
Um, You've yes, mentioned yes, Gephi in your your presentation. In, in what software have you used to get to these slides to make this easily digestible? I'm not allowed to say anything about how we got the data. We um, saved the data in a Postgres instance on a Ubuntu instance, and the front end is a little bit of JavaScript and Node.js API that I built. That um, in the database we used cron jobs to act to update this, and for the analysis we used Python, everything that's not Gephi, and we used Gephi for this um, for this. And we used Gephi for the network data, and then the slides are Keynote. Did you also look at likes and comments for the interactions? Comments, yes. Comments, yes. Likes did not um, follow in there because we were unable to collect them. There were way too many of them to collect them. So even with software. Okay. And maybe as last question, Frage, um, auch ein also up to date, what about the relationship to the Querdenker, which are the um, Corona deniers in Germany currently? It would be really interesting if we had um, current data, but unfortunately we do not have current data. We have found sim, we have found different Querdenken accounts, especially like patriots and um, conspiracy theorists. We we were considering the queer denken theme, but it didn't really spring to mind. Okay, then thank you so much for your presence, for your Q and A session, for your presentation, and all of the corrective theme. We would be excited if you would stay with us at Chaos Zone Design TV. The next talk is um, DevOps, and yeah, we from the translation teams are saying thank you for listening to the English translation of.